Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be discussing about fat soluble vitamins. So we are all aware how vitamins are important for body growth and functioning, right? So vitamins has been divided into fat soluble, water soluble vitamins. So as as I said, we'll be discussing about fat soluble vitamins. And out of these fat soluble vitamins, the major fat soluble vitamin is vitamin A. So if you take any vitamin to discuss. so you should discuss them under the following headings like history of that particular vitamin and chemistry what it is made up of and sources what are all the food substances that particular vitamin is available whether vegetarian source or non vegetarian source and required daily allowance or recommended daily allowance how much amount of particular vitamin you are supposed to include in your diet and in case of fat soluble vitamins you are supposed to discuss absorption transport and storage because fat soluble vitamins are going to be stored in our body but this facility is not uh, possible in case of water soluble vitamins as they are going to be excreted in the urine functions of particular vitamin deficiency symptoms of particular vitamin and in case of fat soluble vitamins hypervitaminosis so all these things you are supposed to discuss about a vitamin under these following headings right so coming to vitamin a so first heading to be his uh, history okay the discovery of vitamin a it has been started in the 18th century okay and 1912 frederick gowland hopkins okay he has identified some factors in the milk okay which are required for the growth in the rats okay and in 1917 elmer mccallum and other colleagues they have discovered but they don't know this is vitamin a but they have discovered some factors along with the lipids okay while they are searching for dietary fats okay where they are researching on dietary rat i mean dietary fats and in 1988 okay these accessory factors which are required for the growth has been described as fat soluble and they were referred to as vitamin a in 1920 why vitamin a is known as fat soluble vitamin why why because the way of digestion the way of absorption the way of transportation and the way of storage of these vitamin a related to the lipids so that's why vitamin a considered as a fat soluble vitamin so coming to the chemistry part that means structural aspects what is vitamin a what are all the chemical substances present in vitamin a okay in vitamin a occurs in two forms in food one is retinoids okay and is carotenes okay retinoids is in animals okay retinoids in animals carotenes in plants especially colored fruits and vegetables colored okay colored fruits and vegetables this vitamin is present that is vitamin a present that is carotenes and retinoids that two three forms are there retinol retinal and retinoic acid so you are all should know the difference retinol is alcoholic form and retinal is aldehyde form and retinoic acid is acidic form okay so these are the three forms are there like this ch2oh cho covoh right so retinoids carotenes so retinoids again three forms alcohol form retinol aldehyde form retinal acidic form retinoic acid so coming to the chemistry of vitamin a so as i said two parts are there retinoids and carotenes so coming to retinoids so retinoids are in three forms retinol retinol and retinoic acid you see here this is a alcohol form this is aldehyde form and this is acidic form and what is the main important thing about vitamin a so whenever vitamin a come into your uh, mind so you should think that vitamin a is responsible for healthy vision okay and vision is eyes right okay so eyes is having a visual pigment called rhodopsin and for making of this rhodopsin you require vitamin a so which form uh, there are three forms of vitamin a i mean like what to say retinoid three forms are there and which form of retinoid is useful for making this visual pigment so that is aldehyde form of retinoid is required okay that is retinal so that is levensis retinal okay levensis retinal is useful for making of a visual pigment rhodopsin right so to come into the structure of this retinoids they are made up of a beta ionin ring 
beta ionin ring so this is a beta ionin ring and with uh, polyhydroxy uh, sorry what to say polycarbon side chain okay is made up of polycarbon side chain and based on the function group which is attached okay that is known as alcohol aldehyde or acidic group they have divided into retinol retinal and retinoic acid and coming to the beta carotene structure okay beta carotene is made up of two beta ionin rings so this is one beta ionin ring this is two second second beta ionin ring so when you are taking a plant uh, sources for vitamin a so there there is not a direct vitamin a so there is a presence of beta carotene so once it beta carotene enter inside there is a cleavage of this beta carotene and forms two units of vitamin a okay it forms two units of vitamin a that too especially alcohol form ch2oh right and this beta carotene is pro vitamin for vitamin a okay you should remember beta carotene is a pro vitamin pro vitamin for vitamin a so pro vitamin what is pro vitamin pro vitamin is nothing but inactive form of vitamin okay the pre form of particular substance so how to form a retinyl ester how to form a retinyl ester so when vitamin a attached to fatty acid that is known as retinol ester or retinyl ester so you see here retinol when attached to the fatty acid forms retinyl ester so retinol ester retinyl ester and uh, there is no ester with retinoic acid okay only two uh, two forms of retinoids can form esters okay with fatty acids so beta carotene when it is cleaving it forms most of the times so retinol and sometimes retinoic acid and conversion of retinol to retino uh, retinol i mean alcohol form to aldehyde form or aldehyde form to alcohol form it is possible okay because this formation is reversible so coming to the sources so as i'm showing in the picture you can make out all the colored fruits first we'll talk about the vegetarian sources plant sources so all the colored fruits and vegetables you take up avocado okay and uh, pumpkin okay and then uh, uh, what to say uh, bell peppers okay carrot okay uh, uh, aloo uh, what to say potato broccoli okay to coming to the non vegetable sources are animal sources fish meat and uh, liver because vitamin a is going to be stored in the liver so that's why liver is also rich source of vitamin a and eggs also serves as a good source of vitamin a okay these are all the sources of vitamin a so you see here all the colored fruits like mango that means in plant sources vitamin a exists as beta carotene not in retinoid form it is exists as beta carotene form so mango how much amount of beta carotene so this beta carotene splits into vitamin a once it goes inside the body so orange tomato drumstick leaves coriander leaves carrot radish leaves mint leaves cabbage so all these are the vegans i mean okay vegan sources so coming to the non vegetarian sources seal ox liver cod liver you see liver is a richest source of vitamin a in animals elephant seal turkic husky halibut liver oil arctic bearded seal polar bear so all these are serving as a good source of vitamin a why because polar bear and uh, arctic thing so eskimos or the people who are staying in antarctic regions their main food is like seafood and at times they try to hunt polar bears okay for their protection making the coats uh, to protect them from the cold weather so they hunt polar bear and they use the uh, fat for uh, burning of uh, lamps okay and at the same time they use the meat for consumption purpose so while eating their liver is having ample amounts of vitamin a so that directly they are getting vitamin a in their food and to know about the polar bear okay one ounce of polar bear liver contains enough vitamin a to kill a person so while consuming the liver of polar bear the person should aware 
how much amount he is consuming because large amounts of vitamin A is going to be stored in polar bear liver. So coming to the recommended daily allowance, that means how much amount of vitamin A a person, man, irrespective of the gender, they are supposed to take. Okay. And mainly the daily requirement of vitamin A is expressed in retinal equivalence. So capital R and capital E, retinal equivalence. So men supposed to take 1000 retinal equivalents and women supposed to take 800 retinal equivalents. So one retinal equivalent is equal to 1 micrograms of retinal, 2 micrograms of uh, beta carotene. Why? Because one retinal equivalent from beta carotene, 2 micrograms, that means it is forming one retinal equivalent and 12 micrograms of dietary beta carotene, 3.3 international retinol, international units of retinol. So that's all about uh, chemistry, history, sources, RDA of vitamin A. Thanks for listening.